Today's episode of This Week in Startups is brought to you by HostGator, your one-stop shop to getting your business online. Your domain name, your website, your website design, and even your marketing. They've got you covered. If you have questions, their team is there 24-7 via chat, phone, and email to help you. Start today for 30% off with the coupon code TWIST. And by Citrix GoToMeeting. Meeting is believing. Visit GoToMeeting.com and click on the Try It Free button and sign up for a 30-day trial. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's Jason Calacanis. And on today's This Week in Startups, it's a live This Week in Startups that we hosted at Samsung's Global Innovation Center uh, here in Mountain View. And it was an amazing, amazing interview I did with Amir Rubin, who is from a company called Sixth Sense, which makes really powerful uh, software development kits to make virtual reality environments. Now, I want to tell you four points here. Number one, I didn't actually believe in VR. I thought it was 50-50 that it would actually work this time. Now I am literally 100% convinced that VR this time is not going to suck. It's going to be pretty, pretty cool. And second, we had a mind-blowing discussion about the educational possibilities of VR, i.e., if you wanted to basically learn how to do open-heart surgery, you'd have to go to school for eight years before you would even be able to touch, touch or be in the same room as somebody doing open-heart surgery. In virtual reality... You could be a 12-year-old, and instead of playing Call of Duty, you could spend your time doing open-heart surgery, and maybe somebody who's even illiterate could become the best open-heart surgeon in the world. Kind of mind-blowing, right? Democratization of education. And will movies work on VR platforms or not? Do we want to interact with our favorite stories? Do we want to be... Uh, have George Lucas do Star Wars or J.J. Abrams do Star Wars 7? Or do we want to actually tell the story? I'm not sure. I think I want to sit back and let J.J. Abrams and Steven Spielberg and George Lucas and Scorsese tell me stories. But maybe there's a possibility that there's something interesting to be done with VR and movies. And most importantly, for the people listening to this program who are probably entrepreneurs and developers, should you start a company based on VR? Should you start building apps based on VR? And what is the market going to be for the first class of apps? Will you make billions of dollars like uh, Clash of Clans, like Angry Birds? Will you get a head start in everybody like Dropbox or Evernote and other things that did really well on mobile? Or is it too soon for you to start developing or building startups in the VR space? It's an amazing episode. Thank you to our friends at Samsung for hosting us. We're looking forward to spending much more time on your campus. That's what it's all about, man. They said, funny is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Funny is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. For Samsung for hosting. Um, so, um, I have to say, I have been in the industry for 25 years and virtual reality has been this topic in science fiction that we've all debated. When is it going to arrive? Johnny Mnemonic and the metaverse and Neil Stevenson and many different, um, people have predicted this would come and it's here. I'm actually convinced that this time is actually the time it's going to work. And the reason it's going to work Um, is because of the great work in software that Amir is doing, but also these devices um, have made it really, really possible uh, for all of us to have a headset and the sensors and all this technology and the screens uh, and the lack of latency has gotten to the point where this is actually going to work this time. And it's going to work in a number of applications and really it's going to be up to entrepreneurs like many in the room to create those applications. The technology is only as good as the software. It's only as good as your imagination and what you manifest in this world. So it's great that Samsung has built this great technology. It's great Amir has enabled it. But they need developers to come up with great ideas and take chances and risks with the platform. And I think what we're seeing uh, today is very much like the web uh, in 1996, 97, 98, which we all knew the potential was there. But maybe we didn't actually experience the true manifestation of that until maybe 2003, 2004 when broadband arrived. So this is a perfect time, in other words, for entrepreneurs to engage with this platform. Uh, So Amir, uh, tell everybody the size of your company, how long you've been doing it, and what the company um, basically does. Uh, Thank you for um, attending this event. I've been a big fan of Jason for many years. For many years, wanted to be part of his 
experience. I think he is an experience and I look forward and looking forward to experience it with him. Thank you for Samsung for inviting us and making us uh, able to share what we worked on for many, many years. And uh, at Six Sense, we started seven years ago and the focus of Six Sense was to enable intuitive and very natural interaction with immersive media. It was always been my goal and I'll take us back to 93, 94, when my first as a, as a contractor for the Israeli and the US uh, Navy, uh, I was introduced to a very interesting simulation project. And it was my first interaction with virtual reality. And it was a very complicated system and obviously very expensive, but I caught the bug then. And since then, I've done everything possible to acquire the necessary experience, both on the business end, but mainly the technology and the relationships necessary uh, to make it available to consumers. And it took longer, obviously, than I expected. It always does. It always does, and, and, and uh, it was a major heartbreak, it, as the 90s showed us that uh, you know, we need to acknowledge that you know, the technology is not there yet. But then companies like Samsung is uh, pushed the mobile devices to the point where we can have a, a mobile phone and put it into a simple headset with simple, I don't wanna make GeoVR sound too simple, but it is simple when you break it down. It's plastic lenses, it's plastic housing, and it is a, a, some nice technology that Oculus provided Samsung. But the bottom line is every phone from Note 4, from Galaxy Note 4 going forward is a VR-ready phone. S6 is better, Note 5 will be even better. And therefore, we have a VR ready to market ready for you as developers to enable us with content. That content combined with work of companies like Samsung, working with companies that make platforms for developers like, like, like Sixth Sense, will enable all of us to revolutionize the way people interact with digital media. And I wanna make one last point. I know it's a very long introduction, Jason, I apologize. Okay. But one more point, I'm known to be very- You're Israeli. I'm Israeli. <laughs> I, I, I accept that. Yes. Really. And that comes with liabilities. Yeah. <laughs> so I would like just to, to make one and, and most important point that not only we are focused on mobile VR and not only we are uh, focused on gear VR because it's in the market and it is with the commitment that Samsung showed is, is where I believe developers can monetize their blood, sweat and tears, their investment in the next 24 months. I also believe that it's not just gaming. Like some young people that started at different companies is, is like to focus on. It's really about every industry. You know, we have over 16,000 uh, downloads of our SDK. We have at least 3,000 of them clearly communicating what they're working on. And less than 20% of them are gaming. It's interesting that over 35% of them are actually education and training, training you to be a, a welder, training you to handle hazardous material, training you, you know, as an as a, as education program, how the brain works as, a, as a, all gamified, but all very eff effective and efficient, and many, many more things. Let's see that, the demo. Exactly. Because the demo is so impressive. And then the, let's go to the demo because yeah, that's yeah. where it is. So this is the Samsung headset. You got an S6 in here. So that's a exactly. phone if you haven't seen it. It snaps in place pretty easy. I would snap it in right now. And it's pretty lightweight. What is the cost on this going to be? Is there a cost so yet? The, the Gear VR currently selling at, at stores for two hundred for one hundred ninety nine dollars. And then you have to have a phone, but you have that already. And the phone, hopefully, you already own Galaxy, yeah. and therefore you don't have to worry about it. Okay. And then our system is at three hundred and eighty six dollars. Again, what you see here is our dev kit for the developer community. Yeah. But when it comes to consumer market, it will be cheaper. It'll and be it's cheaper, sooner. smaller, and maybe built in and definitely built in on the headset, yeah. controllers will be customized to the experiences and they will be much simplistic, more simplistic than what you see. So here. let's explain to everybody what this big battery pack or whatever this is over here, this, what is this? This is your absolute position and orientation tracker. 
it tracks the position and orientation of, of your head at 133 hertz, which is seven and a half milliseconds, sends a packet that, communic that gives the position of at one millimeter accuracy and the orientation at one degree of accuracy. The combination makes it that there's no motion sickness, there is complete immersion, we call it presence. We tie this yeah. hardware with our presence engine and you are ready to develop applications. And this motion sickness issue, which I suffer from motion sickness, I literally cannot be on a boat without taking with us. meclizine. And I hate virtual reality for this reason because I always got nauseous. But I've been wearing it now, I'm not actually getting nauseous. The issue is the latency of when I move my head and when the scene moves. And I have to say now, it feels like it's zero. How much latency is there actually? There must be some level. What is the actual latency at this point? Is it zero or? If you keep it below 10 milliseconds, yeah. so I can track your position and orientation of your head yeah. and communicate it and, and render it in the point that you cannot tell within, within a frame, right. you will think that you are experiencing you know, so in one a, a frame, real life experience. One frame out of 30 per second or whatever it is? It's, at, you know, it's, it's one of 60. So it needs at least at, at about 16 milliseconds, it needs mm -hmm. to be communicated and available for so you. So if for I viewership. was moving my head around very fast, would it, the screen start to blur a little bit or? So the position of your head will be reported at every seven and a half milliseconds. A Galaxy a S6 is already at the level that you do not, you will not be able to tell. So difference. below my perception ability. In other below words. your perception okay. ability. So let's try it. And I had two In-N-Out burgers. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. I promise you, no. Come closer. Come closer. No. <laughs> All right. So um, who are you? I'm Glenn Matlin. Glenn. Can okay. Six cents? Okay. He he told me you were the Uber nerd at Six Cents. Uh, okay. Is the is the ultimate gamer. No. Wait a second. How great is your life? That literally you do virtual reality gaming, and you're paid to do this, correct? Yeah, it's OK. It's pretty much the greatest <laughs> life ever. It's pretty good. I have a sense that you played some video games when you were younger. Just a couple. Just a, Just couple. a couple. Well, congratulations on having it. You, when you tell your mom that you work in virtual reality and you get paid to play video games, it, does she believe you or no? Well, she finally knew what I was working for until this day. Perfect. Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's try it. And I'm going to turn this on. Um, now. I'm going to hand you your hand. OK. All right. The video. There it is. Okay. So is the video up over here? Just a second. You guys can see. Now again, do? Gear VR is the best platform, I, I, I will always say, and especially on mobile device, but we cannot stream it to a TV yet. We cannot oh. spend that resources. So we're going to show you a basic video. Oh, so they're right seeing now. a video that's different than what I'm seeing? Uh, it's a video. I, just that they have the idea of what you're doing. Okay. So anyway. I, I mean, I am on a golf course right now, and I have to say, like, this is so perfect. It, it's pretty amazing. And I can uh, hit the ball perfectly. You guys don't see it, but I hit a hole in one. Um, <laughs> and what do you know? I hit two in a row. Um, not unlike my nutritional game. But what is fascinating is, obviously, the resolution is so great that you, I mean, it almost fools you into thinking you're on a golf course. And there is no motion sickness. I mean, the the swinging of I'm swinging the golf club right now. I hope I don't hit anybody. But where my hand is, which is based on this controller, is so accurate, it is scary. Um, and this is this technology from um, the Gear VR has some of Oculus's technology in it, right? Yes, Oculus uh, has been a, a very important part of VR as a whole, as we know. Yeah. Uh, they are partners with Samsung, yep. and uh, they they have certain technologies within within uh, the Gear VR, which 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 are a critical component. Yeah, you know, I will let Samsung discuss uh, any details about that. But yep. it um, is it is it is a very important part. Sam uh, Oculus is a very important part of the Gear VR ecosystem. So this controller looks a little bit like an Xbox controller. It's got the little joystick here. Um, but this also knows my motion. So it knows exactly how my wrist is pointing right now. It exactly knows to the absolute position orientation of every move you make. It, like I said, report it every seven and a half milliseconds. Incredible.
Hey, everybody, let me take a moment to tell you about HostGator. Stop thinking about the business you want to do and just start doing it. Yes, it is the first step for web hosting and domain names. Go to HostGator.com, and it's a one-stop shop for everything you need. WordPress installs, drag-and-drop builders, easily set up custom email addresses, and do in-house design, SEO, and pay-per-click services. Um, and it all starts at like $4 a month hosted. It's incredible with uh, VPS and dedicated service, 24-7 uh, support, 365 days a year. And we use it here at This Week in Startups because it's super, super affordable, especially compared to some other hosting options, which have gotten very expensive for us. And we were able to uh, use HostGator to save literally thousands and thousands of dollars a month of my money. This is kind of important. And HostGator is saving me, Jason Calacanis, thousands of dollars a month, which I appreciate. Um, the first hundred This Week in Startups listeners uh, can sign up using the promo code TWIST25, and they will get a one-year uh, HostGator hatchling package for just $25. Yes, that's the one year of HostGator hatchling package for just $25 if you use Twist25, and that includes unlimited disk space, bandwidth, unlimited MySQL databases, unlimited email accounts. I mean, everything's unlimited at this place, and it's super affordable. And don't worry if you're not one of the first 100. You can still save 30% using the promo code TWIST. So you have two promo codes there. Try the TWIST25, and if not, use TWIST, and you're going to get a great deal. Welcome to the This Week in Startups family, HostGator. We really appreciate the support you've been giving us and the technical team, Jacob and Jackie, um, as we continue to scale our business and our expenses got very expensive. And we, hey, we decided we would uh, shop it around and see if we could find a good deal. And HostGator was an amazing deal. Again, we're saving thousands a month. And you can start for as little as, gosh, a couple dollars a month. It's a really great service. Go ahead and check out HostGator.com and thank them on Twitter. Welcome to the family, HostGator. Will the will this be what consumers are buying next Christmas or two Christmases from now, or are you going to um, fabricate these for? Because this is three D printed, I think. Or no, that's a Shapeway three D printed. It is a Shapeway three D printed. It's it felt like it. Yeah, um, that's, that's our dev kits, and we work very closely with Shapeways. So this is incredible. You actually make your dev kit with a three D printer company, Shapeways, uh, to make one off versions of each of these. H how much time has having 3D printers taken out of your development cycle and building product? Oh, it took. I mean, if you can imagine how many iterations we have to go through by, by the time you have a, this is a dev kit. It needs to fit so many different applications. It needs to be yeah. satisfying for education developers, for a, a rehabilitation developers, and at the same time, it needs to fit the gamers. Yeah. So we have cut I mean, we've better cut the, the, the whole industrial design out of. It became a non-issue, and, and the bottleneck became, uh, the truth is the bottleneck became FCC and all sorts of technical issues. Fascinating. I mean, this is actually what you're seeing now um, as entrepreneurs. You have multiple different cutting-edge technologies now moving the ball forward faster. You, 3D printing is something we all kind of made fun of. There's no use for it. But really, companies like yours now are able to, it, to, to rev the hardware so much faster without having to do mold injections and send them to China or whatever to build them and then send them back and get them wrong. I mean, the cost is a tenth or a hundredth? The cost, is, the cost of 3D printing is still higher than if I do tooling. Right. But the cost of time. The cost of time is, is in, in, in our world is unbearable. Right. By the time you actually finish tooling and go it into production, you practically risking your time to market altogether. The window is not allowing you. Got it. Plus, we can work with developers, get feedback on an ongoing basis, implement, show result, get feedback, change back. It's it's Incredible. basically the way it needs to go. What what is this box here there on the on the base station? Obviously this charges the three motion detectors. What do you call them? Motion detectors or? We call them trackers. Trackers. So the three trackers um, charge up here and they live here. But what does this box do? What's it This here? box is what creates a reference, a play zone, we call it. Mm -hmm. It allows you to have 18, a, 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 a diameter of 18 feet mm -hmm. all around. So basically all the way from approximately here to all the way you go to the window mm -hmm. back there. You can do whatever you want. You can, again, with Gear VR, mm. you know, desktop um, HMDs have wires associated, so you're limited. But with Gear VR, you can walk around. You All know, right, you're not plugged course. in. You're not plugged. So 
you can do, that's that's where what it signal are you using? Is it the Wi-Fi signal or Bluetooth in the when it's sending signals from the from the phone to the so we send signal. Bluetooth uh, BLE Bluetooth Low Energy straight from the from the trackers from yeah. the controllers and the trackers into the phone. Got it. So using the standard. Can can you have more than three of these trackers? Could you have nine of them and then three different people being tracked on one of these base stations? You see, that's the beauty of being with Samsung. Yeah. They have a, an amazing lab that are experts in, mod in, in working with Bluetooth. Mm. Our tracking technology supports, I can do 50 trackers. 50 Bluetooth. Bluetooth is where we are limited to up to five right now at that, at that uh, frequency. What is amazing is like just three or four years ago, Bluetooth was so worthless, we couldn't get it to a, like attach to our cars and like make the speaker work. And then all of a sudden Bluetooth started working. But what happened? Samsung happened. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> something happened in the Bluetooth standard where it, like it just, the, the, it seems like the Bluetooth devices made in the last year work, and then the jam box from two or three years ago doesn't work, and the jam box from this year works. It really comes down to what happened to displays, what happened to, to processors. Yeah. You know, it's the mobile ecosystem that happened to us. Yeah. It made everything accelerate development and made it with the help of Google, with the Android, an open platform. So suddenly, everybody can use it for everything, for anything, and, and therefore, made it ready and 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 okay. and, uh, and willing to accept uh, technologies and platforms like ours. Okay, so we're going to do the next demo? Yeah. Let's do the next demo. Now, this is on the Oculus. This is their dev kit 2, right? Yes. Am I correct? Yes, the DK2. This is the DK2. This is the DK2. Uh, Which they, when did this come out? Six months ago? A year ago? Uh, it's about a year ago. About a year ago. And they have this new one called Ocean Beach, which nobody's, or something like that? Crescent Bay. It's Crescent close. Bay, yeah, sorry. The um, next one is Ocean Beach. Is it really? No. No, but okay. It be. So <laughs> I'm just going to rename their product. So the Crescent Bay. If you uh, said it. Have you used be. the Crescent Bay, or is this like a unicorn? Nobody's used it. Have you used oh, it? Oh, no, no. Crescent Bay has been in use, been in demos, and Crescent Bay is an amazing advancement. Mm. It is, you know, it requires a PC, like this custom PC we ah. have on the ground, which is currently and tethered. Yeah. and tethered and not available in anyone, any consumer's hands. Right. But soon enough, yeah. in three years, hopefully everybody's going to have a PC okay. that can handle it. So um, now I'm shopping, and I have hands, and I have to pick up the controllers. Okay. Just walk over and pick up the controllers. That's where they actually are. God, I feel like Getting I'm going to uh, uh, See, now that's incredible, because I'm really impressed by exactly how accurate that was. Like, it's almost scary. Whoop, I lost an arm. Oh, no, you're supposed to lose your arm. Oh, because you redocked. Oh, because I redocked? Okay, let me put them back down. I'm sorry for breaking it. It's okay. Okay. There you go. Now, I have, now I have hands again, there we okay, go. and now I've got these. All right, so now I have two controllers, and they disappear, which is kind of cool. And, oh, behind me is a menu. And I guess if I go like this, it, that's interesting. It intuitively knows to point. And I can pick shoes, and I'm going to guess I can, oh, I have to pull the trigger, and I can. I'm going to turn on our lovely shopping music. Oh, is there a shopping music to shop by? And of course, everybody knows I'm very into orange, so I can pick this up. Uh, what do you guys think? Will this work? <laughs> I can't see my feed, but um, truly disturbing. And then uh, I can just throw it over here, and she's wearing it. And now, actually, people don't realize this, but this is actually a uh, pixel up to, I think, a quarter inch perfect version of my body. <laughs> we did a 3D. We did do this in 3D before. Um, and uh, yeah, I look pretty good, I have to say. Um, now, how do I get, give me my shoes back. Um, I can put this over here, and I can change the color. But I want my NYX orange, maybe blue. I'll go back NYX orange, put it in my cart. And you know what's really interesting about this is I obviously did this demo a little bit earlier today, but what's truly impressive about it is I feel very confident now, it's so intuitive, that I actually hated the concept of shopping. I thought that was bullshit, like it would never work. <laughs> and look how fast I'm buying stuff. I mean, I'm gonna go bankrupt. <laughs> this is just crazy and fun. Like, it seemed to me that buying do I look stupid, by the way? Because <laughs> I don't even know where you people are. Are you guys this way or over here? No. This one. Okay. 
So are you, and I'm looking at my robotic hands right now. I feel very <laughs> silly. Um, this maybe we should change, because I feel like I'm a stormtrooper. So I feel like a droid. And star. Yeah, I need the mannequin. Um, it's really disturbing um, how quickly you pick this up. And I could actually see myself walking through the aisles at Whole Foods. And this might actually be faster or more interesting than picking from a menu uh, in a browser, which seems like it'd be much faster. Um, anything else I should try here? Definitely. Let's go, let's go training you how to handle a handgun. Oh yeah, okay, I'd love to use more guns. So I should leave shopping, put this back? Oh uh, yes, go ahead and just place that right back in the dock. Okay, so I place this back. I'm done with my shoes. Okay. Go ahead and take off your HMD. Okay, and do you mean the headset? Yes. Okay, good. Head mounted display. Okay, <laughs> joking. Um, do you, do you want to do toys first? Go right to we toys or guns? Uh, Can I shoot toys? Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll do toys. Let's do toys. Okay. okay. That is really impressive, though, how um, quickly the interface works. Because you showed this to me earlier. And when I got back in there, I immediately knew exactly what to do. It was very intuitive. So whoever built the software on your team, this was an internal demo you guys did? Oh, yeah. And, and, um, and, and allow me, if I may. Yeah. Allow me to communicate to, the, to, the, to this, this community here. We have developed this platform. So when you go into the SDK and you reach in to, your, to bring in your great idea in VR, and honestly, you will have to do a lot of trial and error because it's a new medium. It takes time. You can ask my friends here from DreamWorks. They've done a lot of work, and it took a long time to get to the right, to the right experience. The point is, we realized that early on and, and, and created a development environment that takes basically days to develop the experience. So to give an example, the shopping experience, the shoe shopping experience, took one designer, not a programmer, with drag and drop user interface, less than 50 hours to create. So by the time you have an idea to the time you can show it to whoever it is that has the budget to actually fund it, to put it into a. So this is the next level. We believe that you need to be able to try the products that you want to buy. Guys, duck. <laughs> yeah, you guys can, oh, hey. Right, hold on a second, I got the cable over here. That, this is a little bit of an issue with the cable. Okay, here we go. Oh, get out of here. Oh, that's it. No, I'm joking. Um, so this is very, also very intuitive, which is I've flown a drone maybe twice in my, three, three times in my life. And this is exactly how a drone flies. And I'm looking at a picture of myself. Yeah, look, at the, look towards the TV. Oh, yeah. That's so that's you. completely disturbing. <laughs> can you believe what makeup can do to you, huh? Exactly. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, the makeup artist is, is the. Magician. You guys don't know, but I'm actually secretly Jason Statham as well. <laughs> you may have seen some of my films. Uh, so this is amazing. Uh, let me get that drone back here. So can I, I just that, grab that drone out of the air? The whole retail experience is, is similar. The idea is that you go in, and we want you to be able to let the people experience the products you make, especially the VR products. We believe it requires. What should I do with this uh, drone, by the way? Because it's getting kind of annoying. P pick it. You know, just click any button, and it's going to go straight to the menu. Oh, right. I forgot. Um, so this is fascinating, though. Just this ability to like grab like the toys from my childhood. It's, you have seem to have a particular fascinating with, fascination with Star Wars here. Is there anything you'd like to share about all this Star Wars fascinating <laughs> stuff, or no? We believe that Star Wars and specifically Jedi is not only my personal obsession for 20 years to get it, so anybody can enjoy it. It's really about enabling uh, the new upcoming Star Wars to be able to. Merchandise and sell all the products. Because it almost feels like I don't have this lightsaber here, but it feels like I could have two lightsabers here, maybe. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm not predicting anything here, but boy, would that be a hell of a Christmas if I could actually. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to break any NDAs or anything, but holy shit, you're going to make a lot of money. Um, 
Forget the drones. Cozy the lightsabers. trouble, Jason. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. The P poor PR guy is like having a heart attack right now. Um, okay. Am I done? Is that it? Yeah. Anything Let's else you want me to touch? Yeah. Just go back. Dock it. Dock it in place. Oh, dock. Okay. Oh, hey. Here you go. I didn't. Realize, you guys didn't tell me I was right next to the table. I could have just tripped on this thing. I'm doing. It. God, I didn't even. It's so weird to like. The go moment back. you take this off. How many people here have had a headset on before? Okay. Yeah. Almost everybody. I mean, the moment you take it off, it's it's like going through a wormhole or something. You're like, oh, this is reality. I sorry, I thought that was reality. So you guys are from DreamWorks. So you're here because you're going to make some Shrek experience or something? What's the story? Katzenberg sent you? <laughs> no, no we're, we're big fans and supporters of Samsung. We're big supporters of Samsung. But you obviously are not here just to visit and for the phones. You actually think that this is an extension of the movie business. That's right. So you do think it's an extension of movie business. OK. So there's going to be some interesting application, maybe. You could see kids wa walking through the Shrek's world, and Shrek 7 will be like this. Sure. Perfect. OK, now I get to shoot guns. So this is an application that uh, will put you into 45 seconds yeah. of uh, experience. David, have you done this one before, the guns? No, no, no. Oh, you should do this, David. Come up and do this. <laughs> Come on, seriously, you have to do the guns. It's yeah. Oh, David. Here we go. All right. When you this is mind blowing and addicting. Like you will not want to stop. Should I take my glasses off? Do you take glasses off, or you can keep it, David? Right. Definitely. Yeah. For those of you who wear glasses, you're probably wondering. Does everything look clear then? Yep. Okay. So you should be able to see your controllers actually where they are. Perfect. Wow. So I did look that dorky. I did look that dorky. <laughs> it's worth it. Oh, wow. So now look down to your right. You'll see a gun there. Go ahead and reach toward it. Pull the trigger. The trigger's actually underneath the trigger right now. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Now if you pull that again, it'll shoot. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it's really my hand. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, just go for it, David. You don't have to really. Don't worry, they have more bullets. You will be out of the Yeah, go. Actually, you know, use the the basic aiming. You know, let's. let's Are really... you telling David he's a bad shot? <laughs> okay, oh, pick yeah. up pick up a. So on your right hand. Yeah, there you go. He's got it. Right hand, left side button. Okay, right there. Takes the clip out of your gun. Now use your left hand to pick up the new clip. Trigger. You're so gangster. <laughs> All right. There That's you go. It. Oh. Oh, three for three. Oh, four for four. Whoa. <laughs> this is the OK Corral. You guys are seeing the graphics on this, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, it's, there's no lag. It's, yeah. You have no legs. There's no legs here. But other than that, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's like Robocop. When you put the clip in, it, it feels like you're putting something in. Right? It does feel like it, yeah. That's seven. Seven for seven. Okay, so now I'm outside. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course. You kind of feel it. Haptic feedback, we're adding 360 audio, we're integrating nine. everything into it. Oh, nine in a row. That's your record. Nine in a row. If you're comfortable with shooting, there is a button on the counter that looks sort of tiny. Make sure you have your gun reloaded and go ahead and tap the green button. Or if you're done, you can just tap the green button. He said, trust me, he's not done. <laughs> you just put an empty clip in. Uh, yes, go ahead and tap that. All right, here we go. Did you get it? Yeah, yep. Just go. Oh. Oh. Empty clip, man. Wow. Again. David, are you like a secretly a spy or something? Is something you want to tell us? Amazing. You gotta try this. this is the... I, I did. That's why I wanted you to try it. It's pretty amazing. All right, let's okay. hear it for David. Very good. Well done. Okay, so since we're recording this for the podcast, we're going to take a commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to have another talk with Amir. And this is the point where you all just scream and cheer. Hey, 
Hey, everybody, let me take a moment to thank our friends at Citrix GoToMeeting. I mean, gosh, think about all the time and money and hassle it takes to hold these meetings. My God, you're going down to the valley, up to San Francisco, uh, the traffic, the cost, the flying places. And my recommendation is that you meet your clients and coworkers over Citrix's go-to meeting. It is a smarter way to meet, and it has beautiful HD faces, amazing HD quality. I just did an all-hands with my uh, team from Inside.com, and it was perfect. Everybody had crystal clear VoIP, or they were dialing in, and people were on different platforms. Some people were on their smartphones. Some people were on tablets. Some people were on desktop computers. And you know what? I have a real thing. I want everybody to have like a headset on. And some people forgot their headsets. And it still sounded really good. Uh, it's really the most professional uh, meeting project product on the market. It's very affordable. I've had it for many, many years. I think I'm close to a decade using GoToMeeting. And I want you to try it and sign up for GoToMeeting today. You'll get it free for 30 days. You have nothing to lose. So visit GoToMeeting.com. Click the Try It Free button, and if you do it now, uh, your first meeting will be up and running uh, in just minutes. And that's GoToMeeting, and uh, your first 30 days are free. It's a fantastic product. You can also, it has a chat room in it, which is also a nice feature. Uh, I like to have somebody take notes and put it in the chat room. You can also record the audio from it in case you want to share that with everybody. And you know what? I do that as well. It's a fantastic product. Thank you, GoToMeeting. Let's get back to this amazing episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to This Week in Startups. <laughs> Yes, we're here at Samsung's Global Innovation Center in Mountain View, California. Thanks again to our friends at Samsung for making awesome products and for uh, hosting the event. Thank you so much uh, to our friends at Samsung. So um, uh, my guest today, of course, is Amir Rubin. You've seen these incredible demos, um, and he is with the company Six Sense, which you can go check out at Six Sense Motion. No, Six Sense Motion on Twitter. And what's Twitter, your website? Sixcents.com. Sixcents.com. So you've been doing this company for, you've been working in this space for seven years. You were uh, doing stuff for the Navy, for the military, whatever. You can't talk about it. Um, <laughs> now, education uh, is becoming a big part of it. You keep bringing up education. Everybody likes to play the video games. The shopping seems interesting. But you keep bringing up education. Why is education uh, so effective in this a realm. You, you brought up welding, which I thought was fascinating. Why would welding in VR be better than welding in the real world? Uh, in, in specifically welding, the liability in the real world to train you yeah. is greater than the cost of the teachers and the, and, the, and the real estate to teach you. There's so much liability. There's so many very uh, high paying jobs. Uh, there's a significant uh, need for, for example, welders and uh, it's very difficult to get uh, facilities and, and, and schools that are willing to teach it. So in VR, just like you were flying the drone earlier, you know, you can try it, get the basic skills, and then when you are ready to go in and actually use a torch, a live fire at a thousand degrees, then you know, you're ready. You can. You're do not going to blow something up or burn your arm off. Or burn your arm or somebody else's arm. Yeah, exactly right. So that actually is fascinating. In in a way, we've had these simulators uh, for airplane pilots as well for a long time. So it makes sense that these uh, kind of high risk jobs with some cost at stake would be better to learn in a virtual environment. I guess medical training would also fall into that. Have you have you delved into that yet? Um, yeah, definitely, we have uh, developers. Uh, that are uh, focused on training um, from surgery, uh, helping in rehabilitation to s for stroke victims, you know, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, uh, education goes back to special education, autism. And it comes down to not only that it's more effective and efficient because effectiveness comes from the fact that you have full immersion of the student, of the patient. So as a, as a content developer, you control every aspect of the experience. And therefore, you can not only uh, deliver and meet all your goals, but you can also track all the user behavior. Ah, so when you're uh, watching the welder, you can actually identify the mistakes and in real time, maybe correct them. And personalize the program to Got that it. specific individual, and then use the data of thousands of those students to go beyond that into the point of modifying the whole program. But but I just want to say one well, so thing. That's very interesting because you're, if you were a, an airline pilot, and let's say airline pilots typically 
if we looked at all the failure rates of planes and let's say you know the wind speed indicator seems to be a problem that we keep having and they, they lose track of how fast the plane's going if you know that that's happening in the real world and it caused six accidents in the last decade you could actually optimize the simulator the simulation for that and get people through that exactly but you know we are talking about where i came from where, where we go, where I came from is the military and the medical exp- and, and professional simulation using VR and 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 I find the 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 most important aspect of VR and specifically mobile VR is the fact that it will democratize and I'm going to make big statements but you know I'm I'm yep. known to do that it will democratize education hmm. it will democratize rehabilitation and healthcare and 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 that's before entertainment I'll tell you I'll tell you what I mean what what I really go for for me and it's a passion of my of myself and 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 my company you can have those amazing uh, professors amazing uh, teachers amazing uh, uh, doctors that uh, that are teaching in in the US or in on or, you know uh, facilities like uh, UCSF or or Stanford or Harvard and they're so limited to how far their reach how far they can go how many yeah there was a certain number of students who could fit in Stanford's school anyone that has a Galaxy S6 can now do it will be able to reach that content will be able to be educated think about the fact that you will be able to train people how to 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 in surgery in Africa in South America I mean in a way anywhere if you think about it and I don't mean to be cavalier about it but there was always this idea that a vi- somebody who is very good at video games might be very good at doing brain surgery or might be very good at doing heart surgery because they have such dexterity and focus and ability to to sort of work in that environment but they would never get the chance because maybe they couldn't academically get there but what if all of the curriculum on how to do heart surgery was available in a virtual environment and anybody could do it what if we have somebody without a college degree heck somebody who's at a high school dropout but they just are a savant when it comes to doing heart surgery, would we allow them if they proved in VR that they're better at this than the Harvard or Stanford educated heart surgeons? Who so, would you rather have do it? The person who does it perfectly a hundred times? I think you have a good point, Amir. I this is the first time Amir can't believe that he can't get a word in. It's a kid from Brooklyn versus the kid from Tel Aviv. Here we go. Who's gonna get the last word? Go ahead. I will. <laughs> I'll put my money on you too. It is it is really comes down to the fact that you look at what happened uh, in, in in the last you know in in the last uh, epidemic of Ebola mm. take a simple unfortunate disaster and say that if we could have taught all the health care all the volunteers how to handle those those Ebola uh, uh, um, materials materials outfits yeah. you know it, you know it will have saved lives you know you can train people and make it available anywhere any any kind of education any kind of rehabilitation and again entertainment but it will make it using mobile devices it will make it accessible accessible to anyone at the cost is the cost of a phone i anticipate and and, and talking to to the to the mobile uh, provide the, the the service providers i anticipate vr to be so successful they're going to give the headset for free they're going to yeah, subsidize it's about to ask that if it's 199 dollars now it feels like something that should be bundled eventually or free um, with the phone. And that's exactly it. They subsidize this for, by hundreds of dollars before the consumer comes and get a two-year contract. So when you talk to them and you ask them, you know, the cost of goods on this is very low. Mm. The value to sell me, and they're the only ones right now with the system, the value of, of, of uh, getting a contract and getting this on top of it, mm. It, there's no, there's, it, there's no question. We just need the developer community to to go in, create a few killer apps, you know, use hopefully platforms like ours. But again, Oculus has, has has great plans, and and other companies are coming out. Let's all focus on enabling VR on mobile phones, and then how are the, how is the developer community? How should they look at this right now? Because there's a limited uh, audience. And the audience is not paying for content yet. I guess they could buy an app. Um, so there really isn't a market there. We have a little bit of a chicken and egg kind of a situation, horse, horse and cart. Should they be building just 
you know, small simulations or do you think it's time to go all in and put a million dollars into building an app? And when would somebody say, if I was an angel investor, when would it be safe for me to say, I'm going to give somebody $250,000 to make an experience and they would be able to make the money back? Is that a year from now? Is it this year or next year? Okay. So the way I, I, I look at, at the adoption mm -hmm. is very simple. Currently, Gear VR is still regarded a innovative addition. I call it a dev kit. Mm -hmm. It's a developer kit to what's coming. Right. Samsung is learning. We are learning. Everybody's learning. We also only make available dev kits. Mm. We make a lot of them, but it's all for developers. Thousands of them? Uh, yeah, tens thousands. Of thousands? Tens, yeah. You know, they make hundreds of thousands. Obviously, right. we but make... But the developer kits, you're making thousands. Thousands. Yeah. We make... We, we are building 15,000. Right wow. now, we have... We have close to the number of uh, developers that already ordered them. But again, just to make it clear, it is, to answer your question, it is coming starting next year. It's going gonna, it's gonna to become a consumer product. Mm. Actually, I know I'm not going to make an announcement, but announcement for Samsung, but as far as I understand, it's actually going to have a consumer product released before the end of the year. Mm. And if that's the case, then you are starting to see applications, starting with 300, 360 video, it's starting with, uh, you know, sit at the best seat in the Super Bowl in, in an NBA playoff and, and sell that seat a million times. Mm. You know, it's, it's simple stuff, but it is killer apps. This is for me to have the best seat, you know. So now's a good time to start game. learning and then the monetization could be next year, early next year, something to that effect. So I don't agree with all this free stuff that the that people are giving. Yeah. There's no reason for developers to give it free. There are hundreds of thousands of, of uh, headsets in the field now, millions, if you call if you if you count a uh, Google uh, cardboard. Yeah. As 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 I see it, if you have a if you have a good experience, if you just put something together, you threw it out there, and you expect people just because it's not enough out there to pay for it. No, but I believe there is enough good product there for people to start charging and there's enough people there you know if if 100,000 people are going to pay you you know 499 it's not bad it's when do you think we'll see the angry birds of this medium we had angry birds for the iPad and for tablets and that really became a driver people hadn't seen a game like that a physics game really um, and they it really seemed to drive people to want to buy a tablet is there going to be an equivalent here i mean obviously there will be so when do you think that arrives it arrives this year or next year like I said, I think it's going to be right together with the consumer product. I think before the end of this year, you'll have killer apps. Oculus is working with a huge budget on all sorts of killer apps for the Gear VR. Mm. Um, you can definitely uh, be completely confident that every other company that competes in the mobile space is doing the same. Obviously, Oculus and, and Samsung has an advantage, but it's just a matter of time. Again, 300, 360 video sports, movies, you know, my partner. Tell me about the is, movie stuff, because the movie stuff exactly. to me, I don't really want to be in control of the experience. Like I want somebody who is a great storyteller, you know, like if Scorsese is doing a movie, I want him to lead me along and him to spend a couple of years finding a great story and leading me through it. I don't really want him to stop the experience and then you know, let me take over in Goodfellas. Well, maybe I do actually want to take over in Goodfellas. Exactly. About it. But I may have answered my own question. But wait, so, what, how do you see this taking taking form in a movie? So, so that's confounding to me. So, without going to too much detail about it, I would just go down to the fact that my partner is one of the leading movie makers. He ran Marvel Studios. He bought Marvel and ran it and then sold it to Disney. Uh, ran Marvel Studios, was the CEO of Marvel Studios. And what he always says is that with five Spider-Mans, endless number of X-Men and Iron Mans and whatever, he was only able to get you closer and closer to the superhero. Mm. He never reached his goal of letting us feel what it is to be a superhero. Mm. And that's what VR is going to give us. You will be any superhero you want. I guarantee you. So it won't be like a movie, gonna... though. It will be more like a video game. Uh, no. It'll be I, more like a movie. I, no. It will, be, it will be a whole new way of experiencing content. And specifically for movies, you'll be, be, you'll be sitting there. You'll be relaxed and enjoying the experience. But you'll be part of it. Look at the kind of uh, uh, what shows. Was your, what was your partner's name? What was that guy's name? Avi Arad. 
So he's the guy. He's the reason why Spider-Man's not in the Avengers movie. He's, he sold all these movies into different studios. Can you tell him to fix that? He's, he's screwing up my childhood. So, look. I really would like the X-Men and the Avengers to work on a project together. This would be incredible. The and Spider-Man, Fox yeah. Fox and Sony. But so, actually, Sony did get Spider-Man. They're gonna, Sony's got Spider-Man. But they're going to allow... Fox has X-Men. But they're going to allow uh, Sony... Sony's going to allow Spider-Man to be in the next Avenger, the next Avengers, and the Avengers are going to loan yeah. some IP to Spider-Man, let's, I understand. Let's, let's not go... I'm not going to make an announcement Why? There's the him. WikiLeaks. It was in the WikiLeaks. Exactly. So, that's not... <laughs> that was a painful experience for the, all of them. Yeah. Let's let's basically look at a uh, programs. I, I, you know, I just had the opportunity to meet with uh, interesting people from Netflix, hmm. and you look at what they have done with House of Cards. You're practically there. You know, at least 10, 15 percent of the experience is. You know, you're talking to Frank. You're talking. He's talking to you. He's, he's, yeah. he's, he's communicating to you. What the hell is going on over there? You know, and and that's. Mm, so that presence. could be that could be the that's the presence. Yeah. Now think that instead of there, you're sitting by Claire on the couch, and you're part of the experience, or he's pushing, you know, the reporter down, you know, into the subway, and you're right there. No with, spoilers. No spoilers. Oh, that's Amir. No spoilers. Being out there, uh, okay. Okay. I have no access to any uh, okay. any any information <laughs> that you don't know. The the thing is, I feel that, I, you know, I just sat on a panel, yeah. two panels in 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 digital Hollywood. And you have all these movie makers. They're all fascinated. They all say, what are we going to do? The biggest problem that they all have, just like the video game developers, it's a whole new medium. Mm. It's going to require new skills, trial and error. Again, you have companies like DreamWorks, which are pioneering in VR now, trying, yeah. trying, trying. That's what's going to take. Experience, experience people like like my, like like Avi Arad and, and many others. Spielberg is working on all sorts of interesting things. It's trying and coming with a whole new way to experience it. And so now, if the developer shortage wasn't enough, we're going to be competing with Hollywood for developers too. That's going to be even more brutal. You want yeah. creative people. Yeah. See, Let the beautiful you... thing about VR, it's going to be a whole new way for creative people to monetize their skills. For sure. So let's talk a little bit about when you're wearing it, at what point do you get fatigue? Because in wearing it, I didn't get motion sickness, which is incredible to me, but I could feel like, you know what, I'm ready to take the headset off after about 10 minutes or 15 minutes. I want to take it off, take a break. What do you think the fatigue level is realistically for this experience? And Because people play video games for 10 hours in a row or five hours. People go to three hour movies. People will binge watch for 10 hours. I don't see that happening on the headset as it currently is. I really appreciate it. This is a great question. I hoped you Thanks, asked Amir. that. Yeah. Thank you. So that's exactly my point. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to communicate to the developer to the developer community for the last 18 months. The demographics of PC gaming—that's mm. where Valve is going, and and uh, Valve with HTC, and that's where Oculus, you know, is going with their more and more advanced headsets that are wired into a very very fancy PC. They are going to to reach the gamer, and like you said, gamers. And I have a few of them in my in my office, and especially QA. There's one over there. One of them is the is the is the head yeah. troublemaker over there. Exactly. They play for hours, five, six hours, every new game, every day on top of the work they're doing. So right. my point is, PC and VR are years away, in my opinion. Yeah. But mobile VR demographics, mobile demographics in gaming is a short experiences. People do not expect on their mobile phone to spend more than, you know, five, 10 minutes. So VR, perfect fit for mobile. Ah, so you see the, almost like casual games to PC games is the sort of analogy. We can get the other 90% of people to play casual games who would never play Call of Duty or StarCraft. Exactly. And yeah. even if you play Call of Duty, you will not play a Call of Duty, you know, for, for two hours. You'll play, you know, a, experiences that are short. It's yeah. going to be like the, the, the reborn of the arcade type experience. Ah. Two, three, four minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. There's no reason to do more. And right. by the time, you know, the next display will come, the next processors from Qualcomm, yeah. those will enable you to move into a five, a, 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 you know, a, a one hour and beyond. What is this required, like all the straps? And the and the strap on the top, and it's just it's still pretty big. At what point will this become small enough that it, it'll feel more like sunglasses, or you know, maybe 
ski goggles not from 1976? Because it feels like you're 100%, ski goggles, you're, you're, right? This, like this is design on ski goggles. You're yeah. 100% percent right. Yeah. I'm not speaking for Samsung. I'm talking about all the gear, all yeah. the all the 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 headsets, the HMDs are. They went to ski goggles and and uh, and diving to learn about ergonomics. But let me let me let me speak to my technology. Yeah. This is my tracker. Right. It's designed for developers of hardware and software. It is by far about 10 times bigger than it should be. Mm. This is now in the process of being miniaturized to the size that's going to go into a watch, to the size it's going to go into a bracelet. It's mm. just about taking the process of an ASIC. This is why mm. our company doesn't consider ourselves a hardware company. We are a software company that created hardware that is required yeah. to enable our This platform. will be commoditized down to like so, the same so, sensors. So we make this available on a license yeah. to all these giant experts in, in, in making consumer electronics like Samsung. So it could, be in the, it. it could be in the side of a, of a pair of glasses maybe. Exactly. Now, yeah. this piece has, has already companies that are developing it into, into a size and weight. The size is less of an issue because that just makes you look a little dorky, but it's yeah. when you're inside, kind of very dorky, the experience but... makes it worth it. Yeah. But like you said, fatigue is weight. Yeah. And the weight issue, that's being worked on. And the next system is going to be lighter, it's going to be smaller. And you know, the, the big question is women. Hmm. Women is the, is the real target. Women make all the decision what you buy. This is yeah. my home. Well, they also have to be huge uh, on the the uh, casual gaming, Bejeweled and Angry Birds. Hundred percent correct. A majority female. Again, experience. why I look at mobile as as the market that we should tackle. But go back to how am I making my wife put this on her yeah. head? Very difficult. It's the same issue with the large I tried, watches. I yeah. tried, and 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 I can tell you that the the way I I was the first time I was able, I just told her it's worth it. Just put it on. I had to recruit my son, my my 19 year old uh, college kid that runs the VR club at uh, Clemel McKenna and was working for one of the VR companies as an intern last summer. I told him, do me a favor, invite mom to the office where you work. Let her tell her, mom, come see what I'm doing. Oh, so you used your son as bait. That's the perfect I, way to do I, it. I, I, I had no choice. Was that like, was the only way. Call your mother. And he and she came in, and when she experienced the sea, and 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 he gave a very calm and a, a great experience that she understood. And then when he told her that experience you just had will allow you to have your my wife is Ethiopian, mm -hmm. will al allow you to have your mom and your dad in Ethiopia joining you and and our kids together in an experience. You know she got it, and not only she got it, she became she put together the, the the neighborhood you know ladies to start giving us advice how we're going to make this mm -hmm. appealing to them what so they care about it's really the value of what's inside that will drive people to get over the, the the dorkiness of it or whatever just like carrying a mobile actually carrying a smartphone with you when the palm pilot came out or the newton before that or even the blackberry it was considered a dorky device that people wouldn't have and it just took a little while for the design and the miniaturization to catch up and, and again, it's all about user experience. So the phone took some time to become such a, an efficient, you know, multi-touch and all, enabled us all to, to basically put our PC and our notebook aside, move to different mobile devices. VR is going to enable you to do that and, and, and more efficiently. So between using your phone <laughs> into VR and out of VR, you practically will not need any other devices. What's the biggest challenge that you guys face today? What's the biggest hurdle? Education. Education, not, you know, not, not to bring uh, education developers in, but to bring consumers. Ah. How do you communicate something that unless you experience, there's no commercial that can tell how it feels to experience what you just experienced. Right. We, uh, you know, you look at Samsung, what Samsung is doing, they, they, are, they are building kiosks in Best Buy. They wow. realized very early on, you know, and, and, and you know, my colleague at Samsung on the sell side, on marketing and sales is Nick DeCarlo. He looks at this and, and saying, okay, I have to accept the fact that I need to put kiosk in the Best Buy for Best Buy to be able to 
communicate. The salesperson, videos, commercials will not do it. So you actually have to put the headset on. So going to where the people are, going to where the early adopters are. It's interesting you mentioned the arcade. It seems to me that, you know, at an amusement park, an area where you could actually play these games, the same way you could go play laser tag or whatever, this could be the most popular place at the uh, arcade or whatever. Uh, Why are there not arcades for VR today? If the headsets are going to be hundreds of dollars, maybe even a thousand dollars for the top of the line one, it seems to me a huge opportunity to come in and just pay $25 to, you know, come in and play with VR headsets for two hours or something. So I definitely think that arcades will be using PCs as the first market. Ah. I think mobile, there's so many applications that are more important than games, mm. even virtual retail. Mm. You know, I want to experience the product before I buy it. Like you saw, I I, I want. I know. have to say that was the one that I was most impressed by because I thought shopping in virtual reality was stupid because <laughs> it just seems like Amazon is so efficient to go up and down the screen to see the reviews and then to buy. It just seems like a better experience. But there was something when it's really high resolution like that to actually being able to look at this one, look at this one, look at this one, and if that actually followed along the. Um, predictive analysis of Amazon where it shows you what it thinks you like next. I mean, just the ability to go and look at one shoe and say no, and then it's, okay, let's put another technology in here, some collaborative filtering. Hey, people who didn't like that and didn't like that, but did like this, like that, right? And if you start stringing that along, wow, now it's like, I get the value of being able to look at it in 360 and the value of collaborative filtering in one stream. It's, it's almost like somebody, you have three or four people in the store running over and just saying, you'll like this, you'll probably like this. You didn't like those, you'll like this, you'll like this, you'll like this. Wow, it's powerful. It's, it's, I appreciate you saying that. And, and, and then you add to that the social aspect. Mm. It's a, oh, it's two a, or three of us doing the same let's, thing. Let's, you know, I, I, uh, I did a quick, uh, not quick, took some time, but a, a survey, a research that my wife was helping me in the neighborhood, just to speak to a few of the, you know, in Los Gatos, a lot of the the the, the users are of, of um, Zappos and, and mm-hmm. Amazon, obviously. But I asked the simple question: What would you want to do? What if what is your fantasy shopping experience? She they, they they say they would like to discuss shopping, and then what is the fantasy that you have? And they said something simple. First thing, most important, you know, it's always a friend, a family member lives in a place that they cannot experience together the shopping ah let's bring them in let's go to you know a, a target or nordstrom or wherever you want to go and let's go anywhere you want to go shop don't necessarily just buy just go shopping go to champs Elysees. go go to france to paris go to anywhere you want and and experience it with your friends first and foremost i have the greatest app ever i don't even know if i should say it on stage because i think i want to invest in it but i'm going to say it anyway because it's good for the show but my God, wedding dresses. It's the ultimate social experience. Can you imagine if like Kleinfelds or what, or Vera Wang had a virtual environment where you could go in and everybody who was going to come to the wedding party, all 50 of your friends could come in and see the dress you're going to be in and watch you model it or walk through the possible dresses. A VR, I mean, if you want to talk about getting women onto the platform. 100%. Oh my 100%. God, to go in there and try on your wedding dresses? And I give you another, I give you, I give you another 24 hours. And you will come, knowing, knowing and following you for a long time, you will come with another 20 ideas that's good. After you experienced it, I yeah. know that you will start turning your, your attention to VR. And that's one of my objectives. Yeah, VR no, I'm, needs I'm, to get attention and from the investment community, which obviously very few of them get it. Yeah, I, you know, it, it feels like this is the moment. You know, I, every other time, there were so many hurdles, cost, um, the latency, just the it looked horrible now it just feels like this is it, it's a very similar moment to when broadband happened so i think this is going to be really successful um let's hear it for amir everybody very well done thank you very and, much and um i just want to take a, a quick second um and i'll ask you to hold the applause we'll just do one big round of applause let me thank uh, a bunch of people on my team who helped out jacob producer jackie uh, ashley michelle bryce um, Matt, 
Luke, who does partnerships, and my entire team for helping out, as well as Samsung, uh, Brandon, David, everybody from Samsung has been such a great support of ours. Uh, big round of applause for everybody. Um, and as I promised, uh, Samsung has a, 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 a gear headset and a S6 for everybody on the way out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I encourage you all to buy an S6 or the Note Edge. It's a really great product. Um, and once again, what I say? Oh, it's Sixth Sense. Of course. I, I said Amir already. It's Sixth Sense. Everybody go check it out. Thank One more you. time for Amir for uh, displaying the future. Thank you. Okay, let's have a drink.